There is one, and only one, the Mashiach. Mashiach is coming. The Christ, the Lord and His Anointed One. That's the first point. There is a king, a true king. But secondly, we're taught here in verses 1 to 3 that the natural heart of every human being hates the true king. See, you have down here in verse uh, 1, 2, and 3, why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers gather together against the Lord as an anointed. Here's what they say. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. Now, that's the translation we've printed out there, the New International Translation. Well, what does it mean? Probably, when you read it the way it's translated, you get the impression that the Lord and the Anointed Ones have the, uh, the kings of the earth in chains, like captives, thrown in prison. That's really probably a poor translation. As I was studying this, I, I, I came to realize, for people who know Hebrew a whole lot better than I do, that probably that second, uh, past, that second word should be translated yoke. The kings of the earth are not upset because they're prisoners uh, and that they have chains on them. The kings of the earth are upset because they have an owner. A yoke is something you put on the oxen, or a harness is something you put on your horse. And the idea here is, there is someone who owns them. There is someone who demands that they be yoked. There is someone who demands that because uh, they are owned and they have been created, that therefore the Creator has rights over them. And that's what they want to have nothing to do with. They say, I want to be my own. Now, this is teaching us, verse 3, that, that this is the basic impulse of every human heart. I think it was George MacDonald. He was a Scottish uh, writer who inspired C.S. Lewis. George MacDonald said, there's one, there's one conviction, the, the central conviction of hell is, I am my own. Now, I think what he means is, that's the one conviction that everybody in hell shares. But also, it's the one conviction that creates hell. It's the one conviction that will create a hell in your relationships, a hell in your marriage, a hell in the neighborhood, a hell in the, na- in, in the community, a hell in your life. If you operate on this principle, I am my own. Take the yoke off. I belong to no one but myself. You see, I am the captain of my own soul. I am the master of my faith. That, says George MacDonald, is the essence of what every human being feels. You feel it from the beginning. Uh, if, you have, if you're trying to raise any children, you know exactly that, that is, that's something that completely affects and dominates the thoughts and the feelings and the decisions and the worldview of every human being as they grow up. I am my own. Take off the yoke. And the Bible, therefore, says that we hate the idea of a king. We hate the idea of someone who has rights over us. We hate the idea of a king who has a yoke on us, who says, you belong to me. You are not your own. You must do as I say. And that's the reason why the Bible says that human beings don't just disbelieve in God, we hate him. Uh, Jonathan Edwards wrote a whole book on this subject, he called them, he, and, and the name of it was Men Naturally God's Enemies. And it's based on passages like uh, Romans 8 where it says the natural mind is enmity with God. You know, there really was a sermon once. There was a sermon in 19th century Britain that ended like this. This, These are the last words. Oh, my friends, if virtue incarnate would only appear on earth, we would fall down and worship. That's pretty incredibly stupid, isn't it? Because, you know, virtue incarnate did appear on earth. And what did we do? We ran. We choked him. We hit him, we nailed him, we whipped him, we killed him. Why? Take this yoke off my neck. That we all hate the king. There's a true king, but we hate him. Now, uh, before I move on, I just I need to respond to the normal kinds of objections that people always give and they raise, and they're they're understandable objections. People say that's silly. That's uh, that's. um, Preacherly hyperbole. You know, preachers like to over-dramatize everything and, and so on. And 
sure, there's a lot of people who are indifferent to God. There's a lot of people who don't uh, uh, obey God like they should be. But the average person is not hostile. The average person doesn't hate God, doesn't hate God and, and conspire and plot against him. Oh, really? Uh, let me give you a couple of... Uh, let me answer the two basic objections. One, people say... Most people really believe in God. Uh, recently, uh, Michael Kinsley in The New Republic wrote an interesting editorial. He'd been hearing so many people say that America was getting more and more hostile to religion. And so he wrote an interesting article saying, he says, that's really bull. He says, uh, he says I know that, that some places like uh, Washington, D.C. and Manhattan and places like that, there's, more, there's a lot of people who don't believe in God. But over 95% of all Americans believe in God. And he says... He said, in this country, is it easier to get up in public and say, I don't believe in God, or is it easier to get up in public and say, I do? Now, of course, if he, if, you know, it depends on whether you're in Manhattan or Peoria, I'm sure. But his, you know what his point was? He was saying, hey, it's popular to believe in God. Most people believe in God. People aren't hostile toward God. People aren't hostile toward religion. This is a very religious country. He's wrong. Because actually he's defined things wrong. The Bible doesn't say people are hostile toward the concept of God or toward the idea of God. No, no, no. But the Bible says people hate the biblical God. You see, it's the biblical God that thunders from Mount Sinai and says, Be holy, for I am holy. Have no other gods before me. It's the God who thunders and says, I will by no means clear the guilty. Or it's the God who sets the biblical God gives us the Messiah and the Messiah shows up. And what does the Messiah say? He says, you cannot be my disciple unless you hate your mother and father. You know what that means? He says, you must love me so much that any feelings you have toward anyone else will look like hatred by comparison. That's how much you have to love me. I have to be supreme in your life. I have to be number one in your life. I must have total control of every dimension of your being. God says, that's, that's the God of the Bible who puts a yoke on you and says, I own you. I am your creator. You belong to me. That's the kind of God, the Bible says, that people hate. And surely there's some people here that are squirming as I talk like that. Right? You know, your back is starting to get up. You say, oh my gosh, what a primitive view. I rest my case. That's the normal way a person reacts to the depiction, to the expression, to the revelation of the God of the Bible. Not just God in general. You know, if I start talking like that, do you believe in the biblical God, the God that thunders from Mount Zion, I be holy as I am holy, who says I will by no means clear the guilty? What's the average person say? Who Those 95% of the people who say they believe in God, you know what they say? They say, well, I, I believe in a God of love. I rest my case. The Bible says we hate the God who is the king. We hate the God who says, you are my possession. All the ends of the earth are my possession. See verse 8? I own you. Here's the yoke. That's the God that we reject.